Okay, welcome back to uh, another relearning Angular video. Today we're going to do nested routing and talk about that. Um, what that means, I stumbled upon this in the common routing tasks on the Angular developer guide. And at first I had no idea what they were talking about. I found some other articles that helped explain it to me and get it through my thick skull. And I thought it would be something that you might stumble upon too and think what's going on. So I thought I would share it. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. That way you don't miss any videos in the future. And feel free to also go back at the beginning of this playlist if you want and check out all of the relearning Angular videos from start to, depending on where you're at in time, maybe finish by the time you get to this. We're getting closer and closer to half a million views. I know in no time we'll hit that and that will be like mind blowing to me. And I really do appreciate all of you coming on here and hopefully learning something after the day is done. So uh, yeah, let's let's go back and let's reiterate what happened in the last video. Last video we added redirects to our application. So if I go to localhost 4200 and I hit enter, notice it redirected us to the home route and then it displayed the home component. If we go to about, it displays the about component down below. So what is nested routing? Nested routing is probably what you would have expected from the name, it is routing inside of routing. And so I wanted to make a good example. So I'm going to create a couple uh, components and they're gonna be movie genres. So in the app directory, I'm actually gonna create a new directory and call this genres. And let's go ng, G, C. So we're gonna generate a new component and this is going to be the action genre. I guess I gotta be in the project. So let's CD to relearn, try that again. And it's gonna put that directory of the component right here, but I'm just going to drag and drop it into the genre directory, just like that. And then what it'll do is it'll go through this project and it'll update the path of the action component. And that's what's asking right here. So I'm gonna hit yes, because we want that to happen. I don't wanna manually fix that path in the TypeScript. And let's create another component uh, so ng generate component, and this one's the horror genre. So let's create a component for horror, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll move it into the genres directory as well. And yes. And yes, let's update the import statements. Okay, so now in the genres directory, we have these two components. We have the action, we have the horror. So now in the home component HTML, I'm going to go down a few lines and put an h3 and say movie genres. And here we're going to have two anchor tags. So instead of href, um, it's router link. We learned that a couple of videos ago. And here I'm going to say slash action. And then the text of this anchor tag is going to be just action. I'm going to copy this line. And let's put a break here as well. So it's going to be on a new line. And this is going to be slash horror for the router link. And the text is just going to be horror. And let's see what this looks like back in the application. So we'll go to the home page. We have these two links. So this isn't exactly what I want it. If I hover over the action uh, anchor tag in the bottom left, hopefully you can see it, it says localhost 4200 slash action. And whenever you have a slash at the beginning of your router link, that is going to put you back at the root level of your routing and then slash whatever. So in our case, I'm going to take the slash out of both of these and then save and we'll see what the difference is. I just want to show you what is the difference when you put a slash here and the router link at the very start versus not putting a slash. And then if I don't put a slash, it'll be relative. So it'll say, okay, we're already in the slash home route we're going to tack on slash action after that. So notice now in the bottom left, it's slash home slash action instead of just slash action like it was before. But if I go here, uh, we get that, whoops, you must be lost, that wild card catch all because there's no route for this. There's no route for home action. And what we can do and back in the, uh, the routing module, we can add child routes to the home path. So let's add to this JavaScript object and we can say children colon, and this is going to be 
an array of child paths. And the objects in this array are the exact same as these kind of paths. For example, let's say the path is action, just like this. And the component is going to be the action component. And then we'll do a comma and we'll do the same with horror. So if we do path um, a string horror and we do component horror component, hopefully it sounds like I'm saying horror, not, you know, the other word. <laughs> And we have these two child paths inside of the children array um, inside of our main home path. The only issue now is, and the only thing we're missing is we have nowhere to display these two components. So if we go back to the home component below, we can add another router dash outlet. And notice all of this is displayed in a different router outlet. So this is a router outlet right here inside of a parent router outlet because when we hit slash home and we go to slash home, this is going to be displayed. And then when we do slash action, it's going to display that component right here where this router outlet is. Let's take a look. So if we go back and it's already at slash action, so that's why we see action works. So let's go back to just home. There's nothing displayed here, right? where this router outlet is in the HTML. But if we hit action now, we see the action component because that's what the action component says. It's what the action component HTML is by default. Action works. Same with horror. If we go to horror, notice the URL, it's slash home slash horror, and we get the horror component. Horror works. If I wanted to add a new component, let's do that. Let's call this thriller. We got this new thriller component. Of course, I'm going to move it up to genres. Yes. Here it is. We'll add that as another child. So let's start by adding um, a break first and then another anchor tag. And this is going to be thriller. And back at the routing, let's add another child. So we'll do another comma. An object here, the path is going to be thriller. Right, and the component is the thriller component, just like that. So now we have three children of the home path, and this says horror, not thriller. Let's go back and change that, just like this. And now if I hover over it, it's slash home slash thriller. I click on it, we get thriller works. So that's how you can have routing in a routing. So I'm curious if you can do this indefinitely. This is me just trying something out in real time. Children, no way. So we can have children inside of children. Wow, so it looks like you can do this indefinitely. I'm not gonna create another component and try this. Um, Cause after I think two layers, it's gonna become way too confusing. If someone knew where to look at this after two, you know, layers of paths, right? We have the main one, then we have the children. If I had another child to one of these, if not all of them, that would be super, super confusing. And I would not recommend it, but it looks like you can do this indefinitely. But I just wanted to show you what this nested routing was. Um, if you were confused when you first saw it like me, maybe you never heard of it. Well, hopefully now you can take away what we just talked about. So. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next Angular video and take care.